Residents in Lagos and other parts of Nigeria are already grappling with massive fuel queues at filling stations, but it's a situation about to be exacerbated by attacks imposed on petrol marketing firms by Nigeria's federal government. The World Bank has urged Nigeria to urgently strengthen its fiscal management, create a unified, stable, market-based exchange rate, and it has reiterated the need for the country to face out what it calls its costly, regressive fuel subsidy. We'll unpack this ahead on the program. And in Off the Press, we bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. All these ahead on the program. Right, we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning right here, a Wednesday morning in the city of Lagos. Um, and of course, uh, we're reaching you on DSTV and Star Times. We have an interesting package for you this morning. So I urge you to sit back, uh, grab whatever it is you have. I mean, I have a, a cup of coffee here and then you can have yourself a fantastic uh, program. We'll start off with a top trending segment where, of course, um, yesterday, uh, some media houses reported and uh, the social media space went agog with news that the Independent National Electoral Commission had been ordered by a court to resume voter registration uh, ahead of the 2022 general, 2023 general elections. Of course, the voter registration exercise started on June, uh, in June 2021 as a continuous voter registration exercise started in June 2021. Uh, and it ran for 12 months to June 2022. Uh, but Serap and 185 other Nigerians had taken INEC to court seeking for an extension of the voter registration exercise. And of course, the court granted uh, that, uh, uh, that, that relief and INEC was ordered to continue extend the voter registration exercise. Um, the, the, the commission, uh, you know, continued the voter registration exercise extended it to the 31st of July, uh, 2022. And of course, that was it. We thought that would be the end of the story, but uh, uh, we, it seems it's not the end of the story as we got this news, this information that a court had ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to, um, uh, to continue registering Nigerians. However, uh, before the end of the day, the sources that came out with this information, because we're all going, I personally went on Twitter to tweet about it and to share the good news with Nigerians. But you see, the thing about this is, is this is, you must be able to see the court documents, at least you see something. And none of the sources quoted uh, the judge, Milord, the Honorable Justice, Ian Ekwo, the same judge who's handling the Namdikano uh, treason case. And that for me was a, a bit, uh, you know, was something I was looking for. Um, before the end of the day, yesterday, uh, some sources had to clarify uh, that the court had actually refused uh, to order the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, to, to, to resume the, uh, the voter exercise. Um, now, what's this case about? Some Nigerians had taken the Independent National Electoral Commission to court. Uh, led uh, is a suit led by one Anajat Salmat and three others. I won't go into their names now. Um, the plaintiffs had sought three reliefs, and this is very interesting, very interesting indeed. All right, so I want you to follow me. The plaintiffs had sought three reliefs. All right, uh, the, the the first relief, the second relief, and the third. Relief. The first relief was a declaration that INEC, by law, is expected to continue voter registration until 90 days before the general polls. That was the first relief. Second relief, a declaration that INEC is constitutionally required to ensure that all eligible voters participate in the 2023 elections. And the third relief was a court order compelling INEC to resume the continuous voter registration exercise immediately until at least 90 days before the general election. Now, by calculation, 
Yesterday meant it was 95 days to the commencement of the general elections in 2023. The national elections, you want to call it that, the presidential elections and the national assembly elections hold on the 25th of February 2023. While the state elections, the governorship elections, elections into the state houses of assembly hold on 11th of March 2023. So by calculation, we had technically 95 days from when the court was given its judgment the judge was given his ruling 95 days to the resumption of the elections or to the holding of the elections in 2023 now when we we got the update and we began to see quotes of what milord the honorable justice in young court said uh, it became clearer uh, that this order was not what it seemed like. Now, the judge agreed with the plaintiffs on merit, saying that indeed, INEC ought to continue with the voter registration exercise until 90 days to the election to allow all Nigerians, um, uh, uh, to allow them, uh, all eligible voters in Nigeria, the opportunity to get registered to vote. But what the judge said was that the element of time had to be factored in. And by his calculation, there was little to no time for the independent National Electoral Commission to do anything. Therefore, he declined uh, granting relief number three, which is, I'm just going to scroll down to that, a declaration, an order rather, that INEC resume the continuous voter registration exercise immediately until at least 90 days to the election. Today, today makes it 94 days to the general election 2023. Today makes it 94 days. And I know some people that were saying when the initial news came out, yes, in conversations that uh, I, I, I was able to have with some one or two persons, that yes, indeed, it, I can just uh, uh, you know, carry its personnel, carry its officials, and head to the uh, voting centers immediately uh, to go and uh, uh, start registering Nigerians, at least we'll have some people register in, in five days. But I asked the question, what or how many people, how many eligible voters will get registered in five days? Who could not get registered in 13 months? It was meant to be 12 months, and uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission was taken to court. And as a result of that, they had to extend it by one month from June 30, 2022 to July 31, 2022. So what will we do in five days that we couldn't do in 13 months? I don't know if you have an answer for that. But the controversial section or the section of the Electoral Act 2022 in question happens to be Section 9. All right? Section 9. Um, where the commission... Uh, is mandated to continue voter registration exercise um, um, for not later than 90 days to the election. Not later than 90 days to the election. We have sections uh, 9, subsection 1 of uh, the Electoral Act 2022, section 9, subsection 6 of the Electoral Act 2022, section 10, subsection 1, and Section 12, Subsection 1 of the Electoral Act 2022, YNEC is mandated to continue voter registration, to update and review the voters' register until 90 days before the general uh, election. All right. So the court, the, the judge added that, quote, this court is unable to grant relief number three of the plaintiffs, relief number three, which I just read out earlier, because going by the date of this judgment, quote, I'm still quoting the judge, uh, this is as per, as per the cable NG, because going by the date of this judgment, from the date of this judgment, the defendant will have just a few days away from 90 days before the general election of February 25, 2023, and March 20, 11, 2023. All right, so the sources that came out with this story, who are credible sources, did an update just to give us the information. Uh, but it was, it's interesting to listen to um, the commissioner, voter, the national commissioner, uh, information and voter education of the independent national electoral commission who we've regularly had on this program. We need to have him back, uh, uh, Festus Okoye. Uh, he appeared on a television program last night. And 
and also told Nigerians, and, and this, is, this is the beauty of the whole thing, it's interesting, let me say, that it was technically and legally impossible for the court to even make such a pronouncement on order for them to, to go back and start registering Nigerians, even if the judge had said in the next, uh, uh, within the next five days they must register, it was technically impossible. Though he said the Independent National Electoral Commission had not been served uh, with a copy of, this, of the certified true copy of that court order. But the question is, didn't they have a counsel in court? But I'm sure the lawyers and legal minds out there know how these things work better than we do. Um, anyway, so, so, so th this is quite interesting. He cited Section 19 of the Electoral Act that says that they need to display, INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, needs to display the voters registered to the public be it, you know, fiscally at the various centers or online for registered voters and Nigerians in general to make claims and objections, which is what they've been doing. But this is it. The Electoral Act says, the state stipulates, it must be done not later than seven days before the 90 days expiration. Seven days before the 90 days expiration, which means that you can't be registering people at the same time, wanting to display, because what are they going to, to, to see? So they have seven days before the 90-day expiration to display uh, the, the complete voter, registra voter register for claims and objections. So technically, they cannot even register people uh, uh, 97 days to the election. Now, you ask the question again, what time will INEC use? in completing the registration they had, printing the voter cards, doing all those things they need to do, you know, cleaning up the register the best way they can, before pasting these names at the various centers for people to see and online. You know. Right now, INEC has been able to weed out about 2.7 million names uh, from the voter register. About 2.7 million names. And uh, they're still working on the register to ensure that they clean it out. You know. so, it was going to be technically impossible for, for them to do this. Now, the question also arose, does Heineck, the Independent National Electoral Commission, have the power to decide when it wants to end the continue suspend rather, so to speak, or so to say the, the, the continuous voter registration exercise ahead of a general election? And Festus Okoye informed or reminded that a court of coordinate jurisdiction, a federal high court, had already given a ruling stating that INEC has the power to decide when to suspend the continuous voter registration so that it can do the compilation quickly to be able to display uh, the voters register for claims and objections from the public. And as we've seen in recent weeks, there have been a lot of complaints and people have you know, made some observations as to some things and discrepancies that they've seen in the register, including seeing the faces of those who look underaged, uh, seeing names appear multiple times with the same face, uh, but with different voter identification numbers and some other things like that. So it is very important, INEC is given time, given time to be able to clean up the voter registration, uh, the voters register. So I think what the, the, the judge, uh, his lordship, Ianko said was that this case had been overtaken uh, by time. And I'll ask again, what you couldn't do in 13 months, is that what you do in five days? I think it's important for uh, the, the citizens to always not wait for last minute, you know, before going out for national exercises, be it a voter registration, uh, SIM card registration, or whatever, which is the way we've been doing things in this part uh, of the world. Let's move on. Uh, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, is uh, an agency. Some people have been trying to understand what exactly their role is, you know, because sometimes it gets a bit blurry. But um, they've been working. They've been working. NSCDC, we call them civil defense. Well, this um, agency of government, uh, that is now armed because, of course, they, they asked Nigerians to allow them bear arms and uh, uh, to help them carry out their responsibilities. Well, the Aquabom State Command of the NSCDC has impounded uh, nine trucks loaded with 400,000 liters of suspected adulterated petroleum products and nabbed two suspects. Uh, we hear 
that the state commandant of uh, the NSCDC, Mr. Suleiman Mafara, uh, issued a statement in Uyo, the Akwabum State capital, where uh, he disclosed this. The statement was made available uh, to newsmen. And it's quite, quite interesting uh, what the NSCDC is doing in uh, in a Kwaibom state. Um, let's, let's, let's just get some more of the background of this. Now, the NSCDC uh, commandant in a Kwaibom state said the seizure uh, was made possible by a combined team of the NSCDC operatives, uh, the Nigerian Army, the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria as well. This is quite interesting. Nine trucks uh, loaded with 400,000 liters of suspected adulterated petroleum products. And this would have made its way um, to the petrol stations. And of course, uh, people's cars would have suffered the consequences. They wouldn't even know um, where the problem is coming from. The mechanics will be smiling to the bank. They probably will curse government and all that. But we get to see that we are also part of the problem. <laughs> we are also part of the problem. I was just complaining to uh, our production staff off the air about how people just parked arbitrarily, you know, blocking the road uh, for those who were on their way to this part of Lagos this morning. And uh, if we, we, we have to ask ourselves the questions. What role do we have to play outside of government in the way the country is today? What role do we have to play outside of government with the way the country is today? Well, kudos. To the independent petroleum, uh, to the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, the Nigerian Army, and of course the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association uh, of Nigeria on that find. And uh, I just hope that no other of such will be seen in a Kwaibom state again because people uh, cannot continue to suffer from adulterated petroleum products. It's just going to destroy your car. Now, this is another one that. Uh, I have close to my heart the next uh, trending story. It, it's bizarre, you know. I have consistently asked why Nigerians are silent on the performance of the Ministry of Finance, you know. Because look at the way the economy is today, the state of the economy, the the the, the level of financial management, uh, the state of financial management, the method and the performance of this administration, as it concerns financial management has left a lot to be desired as they the you know the revelations you know in recent times in the past have showed um the latest one is 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 uh, a, a situation of budget budget party let's call it that this involves uh, two women um and uh, not to cast a special on a female folk but this involves two ministers in the cabinet of president muhammad buhari one is the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. The other is the Minister of um, Finance uh, and, and National, should I call it? Yeah, the Minister of Finance. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, but she's actually Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Uh, the ministries, departments, and agencies have been making representation um, at the National Assembly defending their 2023 budgets. And you know, I mean, the government today in Nigeria is a government of borrowing. The government has to borrow uh, to, to finance its, um, its objectives and to just to run the country. I mean, it was uh, some weeks ago, a couple of months ago, that the finance minister, we, together with the, uh, the man we call Mephi, uh, Gordon Mephile, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and uh, for, former as presidential aspirant of the platform of APC, went to the global financial meetings to ask for more loans. And, and some have asked, and personally, I would always ask, you know, is, is the job of the finance minister just to announce how much the country is borrowing and how much the country is spending? What personality is this finance minister bringing to her job? All right, is it just to announce how much is being borrowed and how much is being spent. I mean, anyone can do that. But what, what, what personality? What is she about? What's her philosophy? What's her ideology? Now, we've seen finance ministers in Nigeria in the past. We've had um, the likes of um, Dr. Ngozi okonje Wiala. We've had the likes of even Kemi Adeoshu. And I can guarantee you that you would have, you would have seen some sort of body language, some sort of um, personality, ideology, or philosophy from any of these two you know, play out in, in, in the charade that we have in the country today as far as the, the, um, the government, you know, financial activities uh, are concerned, all right? Uh, the fiscal 
uh, uh, side of things. It is, it is, it is quite, quite sad. But now, what we have is the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs goes to the National Assembly, sits before uh, uh, the Senate Committee on Special Duties to defend their budget. Um, and of course, Sadia Farouk is a Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. And the Budget Committee um, says, hey, or the Senate Committee rather says, hey, we're seeing a certain 206 billion naira in your budget that you can't explain. Where is it coming from? Of course, uh, Ishako Abo is a member of that Senate Committee. He won't go into his own file. We'll leave his file for another day. All right, we'll leave his file for another day. But remember the minister, who, the senator was embroiled in some uh, some controversy uh, some time ago. That's the man. Um, so they said, okay, where is this 206 billion naira coming from? All right, where is it coming from? We have, we have to borrow to fund the budget. And it seems you, as Minister of um, Humanitarian Affairs, are unable to explain, to tell us where this money is coming from, or what this money is meant for. And they've therefore summoned the Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning to explain this insertion of 206 billion naira into the 2023 budget of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. I'm not saying or trying to suggest there's any hanky-panky going on, all right? I'm not trying to suggest that, but this is what the Committee on Special Duties at the Senate has said. Now, the committee's chairman, Yusuf Yusuf, issued a summon uh, because, like I said earlier, Sadia Farouk, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, uh, Disaster Management and Social Development, appeared before the committee and um, could not explain this 206 billion naira. Now, this is what Ishak Abo uh, said. He said, you intend to borrow 206 billion naira for a project. What are the projects to be implemented? And is it captured in the medium-term expenditure framework? It was quoted as by the News Agency of Nigeria. If it is, he said, what are the specific projects, locations, and activities attached to this? Now, in a response, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs said, you know, that they made mention of the projects in 2022, which were not released, or funds were not released for that project. And part of it was for the Northeast Development Commission. The money was, not, I'm quoting her now, the money was not released, and now we have seen it recurring by almost tenfold, fold, is what she says. Quote, the money was not released, and now we have seen it recurring by almost tenfold. Uh, she says, cool. we are also going to clarify from the Ministry of Finance to know the reason for this increase in spite of the fact that the previous year the money was not even released for the project. So we'll get the details and send it to you. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? I mean, are these, are these guys taking Nigerians for, for a ride or what? You know, that a minister goes to the National Assembly to defend a budget and cannot even explain a humongous amount of 206 billion naira. And now says it's the Ministry of Finance that put it there. They don't know what it's for. They don't have the details. They'll have to, to, to go back to the Ministry of Finance to find out. What exactly is going on? Okay, so before she went to the ministry, uh, to the Senate, didn't she sit down? Didn't she look at what was on the, on, on the paper to prepare herself before going? Or was she expecting to just go and they would overlook it? And then that's another matter. <laughs> Why they didn't overlook it is another issue for another day. <laughs> Let's not go into that. So, so what is going on? I'm not blaming the Minister of Finance for anything here because we don't know. But is this acceptable? I, <laughs> How does this happen? But you see, I blame Nigerians. Because things like this have been happening. I'm not talking about last four years. I'm talking about recently. I'm talking about this year, you know, and the financial management of the nation's economy. I'm not, not talking about the central bank now. Let's see. If, let's leave them. For, I'm talking about <laughs> the federal government through the Ministry of Finance and some of the things we see happening. Nobody even says anything, you know, in other parts of the world. They're trying to, they're summoning the minister. They're asking questions. They're asking for resignations. Yeah. They say, no, oh, the economy is not performing well. The minister has to go. Now, I'm not saying she's, it's her fault, but, I mean, how does this even happen? How does this happen? We have to go. We have to go. We'll be back, and when we come back, we'll look at what the papers have to say.